the same organisms that we find here in this water and that we see under the microscope here, can we find these same organisms in our drinking water? I have a little sister at home. She don't um, eat the paint, but she plays with it. And I would like to know if there's any danger towards that. Suppose you're listening to a radio and you're using the earphone. How long before the noise would affect your ears? How come in the morning when uh, you turn on the water, uh, the water's cloudy? First of all, when the water leaves the Questions from high school students awaken suddenly to the fact that science may play an important part in their lives. All too often, high school science students have been unable to relate what they are learning to the society they live in. To demonstrate that science is relevant to the local community, a mobile science laboratory is now traveling from high school to high school in Washington, D.C. It stays at one school location from one to two weeks, supplementing and enriching the regular classroom programs. The lab is a pilot project created at Federal City College in Washington in cooperation with the public schools of the District of Columbia and backed by a grant from the National Science Foundation. It's a working laboratory that stresses topics of concern to local citizens, air, water, and noise pollution, nutrition, cigarette smoking, drugs. It shows how these problems affect the community and what can be done to solve them. A child who is eating paint can die, can become blind, mentally retarded for life. What we have in this beaker here is what we consider as polluted water. What happens is man breathes the carbon dioxide under normal conditions to the upper portion of the lungs. But inasmuch as carbon monoxide is in the air, it acts as a catalyst and it causes man to inhale it deeper into the lungs where he cannot throw it out. There are five scientific specialties presented in the lab. Physics. Mathematics. Applied science. Chemistry and biology. Science undergraduates at Federal City College present the material. Place the plant under the bell jar. And then put the sodium sulfite into the first filtering flask and the sodium carbonate into the second filtering flask. The next thing you want to do is to pour the sodium sulfite one into the to each filtering flask. What will happen? We have mixed the chemicals. And as soon as we pour the sulfuric acid into the filtering flask, you'll see a reaction. And the gases will flow into the chamber. High school students rotate from specialty to specialty, actually participating in practical experiments. Some may discover for themselves the damaging effects of sulfur dioxide, a major pollutant of the air. Others may test samples of paint from their own homes. The students process the paint samples and are able to discover for themselves whether or not the paint in their homes is a potential hazard to young children. If the final step produces a yellow precipitate, the presence of lead is confirmed. Sound is beautiful, but noise is hazardous to the hair. Right? Still another group may learn about noise pollution and in the process becomes acquainted with sophisticated instrumentation. We're going to talk in terms of animal life and water. Now, Others may be learning about water pollution, comparing the behavior of animals in water known to be fresh against their behavior in water taken from local rivers and streams. The sun helps to trap the particles. Still others may duplicate the techniques used in municipal water purification plants filtering samples from the local water source, then testing them for purity. All the way down here, it passes over these rocks. These rocks are just natural... While this is going on, other students are learning about mathematical variables and percentages, working with data from the various experiments. Math is given meaning by relating it to the experiments the students themselves are performing. There's a six down the bottom here, right? So one of the considerations is what number... In off-school hours and during the summer months, the lab, in coordination with community groups, remains open.
Parents and other people from the neighborhood are encouraged to come in and learn how science is relevant to them. The aim here, as well as that of the school program, is only partly to provide learning about scientific matters. Equally important is generating appreciation, interest, and even enthusiasm about science, learning about the role it plays in urban life. In some cases, it may be a very personal awakening to a problem in the student's own home. How come people can drink that water? It may encourage some students to want to help solve the problems of our environment. It may even awaken interest that could launch others into careers in science. For the college students doing the teaching, there is a special benefit. For they are demonstrating to themselves, as well as to others, that science is relevant in today's world. And through it, they are able to make a meaningful contribution.